Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to the Complete IT webinar with, uh, in respect of uh, uh, Power Automate, um, Business Process Automation. Um, as you can probably see on screen, we were expecting to have um, Anna uh, Domene on the call today um, from Microsoft. Um, regrettably, she's had a, a, a medical emergency, which means that um, she's likely to be joining us probably uh, midway through the um, presentation today. So I'll pick this up from a complete IT perspective. So my name's Tristan Broom. Um, I'm head of ERP here at Complete IT um, and responsible for ERP and, and business applications within, within the business. Um, and my team uh, are responsible for kind of undertaking um, Power Platform, including um, Power Automate activities in conjunction with clients and, and obviously prospects and the like as well. So, um, yeah, I, uh, you're, you're in safe hands uh, in regards to this presentation, but obviously when Anna joins, um, she will then uh, kind of take over from me and, and kind of run through the remainder of her slides then at that point. Um, we are also uh, running a recording of this as well that we'll send out to everyone via email after the event. Um, and there will also be some other digital assets. Um, if we don't get around to doing a demonstration today, as an example, that we'll send out um, that will complement this presentation being undertaken then at that point. Um, so uh, without further ado, I will... Uh, I'll present into the uh, into the slides themselves. Um, today is very much about providing a high level overview around um, Power Automate, a component part of the Power Platform then at that stage. So you may be aware of the Power Platform itself and its component um, kind of elements uh, being Power BI, Power Automate, uh, Power Apps and Power Virtual Agents. We have run two other uh, webinars in the last um, couple of months that complement this as well. And we're also looking to do a, a summary session in the early part of next year um, that will bring all three components of those sessions that we've already um, held together. So you can give yourself a bit more of a holistic view as to how the Power Platform fits in with um, and joins together between itself then at that stage. Um, and obviously the value added um, kind of activities that can be drawn from that. But again, today's uh, focus is around um, business process automation and, and power automate specifically. Okay, so uh, we have um, succeeding with the power platform, low code. Um, today's, the, the session uh, today is very much around, I suppose, efficiency um, and, and automation and how power platform can really enable uh, businesses um, large and small and, and everything in between then at that point to make their operational processes and the like um, as efficient as they possibly can be and I think the last couple of years have shown us that agility and business transformation and the efficiency of activities that we undertake are, are probably now as important as they've ever been so working out um, what processes an organization can can undertake that can may have uh, may have a component element of automation in there is obviously really really important and and that's really a, the focus of this session. Okay, so um, key business process challenges: digital transformation can be overwhelming, and I think that's probably evident to to every business of every different sector and every industry. Then at that point, and obviously what we're looking to do is is to try and make that as effective and as efficient as possible, really, in terms of how um, it works for, for all businesses. Um, because transformation, business digital transformation can mean many things to, to many, many businesses. And obviously, we all have our own independent kind of challenges at mind, whether that's something that is specific to an individual uh, team member of an organization or something that's more company wide and is of more kind of strategic direction to the business. Um, secondly, I suppose, as businesses and organisations grow and evolve, um, processes inherently become uh, organic by their very nature. And actually, the challenge nowadays is probably working out what, what your in, internal processes are then at that point, um, whether they're complex or whether they're unknown, and how you can then um, look at mapping those out to, to, to take account of, um, you know, maybe inefficiencies within the process, um, whether it's being handed through different uh, diff different sets of hands, but nothing's actually um, be being taken any any further forward in that regard, um, and then looking at how we can kind of take that and then mould it and move it forward, and, and you know, like I said, make it more efficient in that way. And then finding new ways is uh, finding new ways to work is hard, and and actually just reviewing processes are obviously a real key part of 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 an organisation being able to 
to kind of challenge itself to be able to take that forward and, and then create, you know, a, a, a kind of a st strategic benefit for you as an organization. Okay, so what can we do with automation? So from a Microsoft perspective and, you know, with these being Anna's slides, um, they look at it in different areas, okay? So personal automation, customer management, supply chain management and central functions. And I think it's fair to say, you know, every business will have an element of, of these um, to, to whatever extent then at that stage. Personal automation, meaning myself as an individual, you know, there may well be activities that I perform, um, you know, Excel being a classic example of that, copying and pasting information, processing its, um, information in um, legacy or on-premise solutions then at that point. Um, and then generating and distributing reports that um, you may well have um, yeah, a requirement to distribute around the organization, as an example. Um, customer management, so again, really trying to reinforce um, you know, the value add to, to clients. Um, then at that point, streamlining uh, processes to ensure that you get a real value add end-to-end -end process in that regard. And equally, it might, um, it might stretch out to the accommodation of, of, of kind of partners that you you all work with as well then at that point um supply chain management down there in the bottom left hand corner again you know i think any business that's kind of dealing with stock and supply chain at the moment i think it's been very evident um during these kind of covid times really that actually supply chain has become um you know quite a, quite a considerable uh, challenge within a, in every business you know lead times um you know distribution of uh, you know, vessels on the water and transportation and all of those types of things. So being able to automate the processes that sit around that um, obviously have become quite kind of paramount, you know, very simply looking at, you know, inventory and, and the real time quantities that you might be requiring, the sales orders that you're kind of processing or indeed the purchasing that you're undertaking as well. And then the, the bottom right hand corner there, the central functions, of being able to uh, kind of pick up a function like finance um, or an, a component part of finance then at that point and reconciling cross systems. So if you haven't got um, say an ERP application, you've maybe got an independent stock system or you've got an independent kind of finance system or CRM of being able to kind of help facilitate those kind of cross checks across the board then. Um, you know, a couple of other use cases in that regard, being able to manage kind of uh, tickets um, or internal requests um, or, or indeed requisitions then at that point. So what, we, what we're trying to kind of summarize today as much as anything is potential examples. Now, by no means is this a, um, an extensive list at all by any means. Every business will have maybe something like we're displaying on screen or they might have something completely different. And it's very specific to each organization. But I think the beauty of what we're kind of describing today as much as anything with the Power Platform and specifically around Power Automate is actually it doesn't really matter if the example that you're thinking of maybe isn't on screen here that it can accommodate for any of uh, you know for any kind of process that you can you can kind of determine um we as an organization you know we have consultancy work with clients in these specific areas then at that point and they will they can engage they can understand with in conjunction with yourselves then at that stage you know what process are you looking to um you know i suppose make more efficient working out what the touch points are, what the, the individual systems are that you're, you're, you're actually, um, you know, transferring information around from or indeed extracting information from um, and being able to provide a, a bit of a blueprint as to how that could be achieved. And, and obviously, you know, the assistance of, of services like that in the first instance will allow you to get moving with, um, with that kind of digital transformation piece and specifically starting to use Power Automate. And then maybe it can then grow out um, kind of organically inside of the business then at that point, once you're able to demonstrate how it can be used um, within the business itself. Um, just, just one point to note there, I suppose, um, sorry, I'm meaning to mention it early, earlier on. Um, we have got the Q&A panel going at the moment. Um, I've got a colleague that's kind of managing that and Jody in the background. So by all means, um, post anything that you have through um, you know, that comes up during the course of the, uh, the session. Um, otherwise, we'll catch up on those Q&As at the end and we'll kind of debrief on them from there. OK, so next slide kind of is demonstrating where the Power Platform sits inside of the Microsoft ecosystem. 
So um, these might be familiar terms or, or, or indeed may not be familiar terms. So we've got the Microsoft kind of 365 um, element in the top left hand corner. So that's your kind of conventional uh, kind of which traditionally like the Office 365. So your Outlook and, and Excel and PowerPoint and know that all of those bits and pieces. Um, at the bottom, you've got the Microsoft Azure. So you know, kind of data center, the, the, the kind of storage side of things as well. Um, top right is Microsoft Dynamics 365, which is the business applications element of um, the Microsoft kind of suite. Um, and then you've got Power Platform that fits kind of firmly in the middle. And as we can kind of see there, has overlaps in terms of all of those individual elements from the kind of Microsoft ecosystem. Um, and because they are Microsoft, you know, there's, there's natural um, kind of uh, integration in and out of the respective areas then at that point. And, you know, it's again, a Microsoft product. So um, whether it's, you know, connecting to email or connecting to one of the ERP solutions that are inside of Dynamics or CRM, or indeed out um, slightly further than that into Azure, you know, technically speaking, um, very possible, but we will come on to a slide in a moment, which means that we can talk about um, relaying that even further than at that point into other connectors and other solutions. Um, at its very top level, though, um, what you'll see here, so we kind of talked about those kind of office applications that you can see at the top. So ready-made application, SharePoint, PowerPoint, Word and Excel and so on, um, the ready-made apps. At the deepest level there, we've got custom um, kind of coding solutions, departmental tools and the like. And as we can see, the Power Platform, which we're, we're kind of talking about here, and obviously Power Automate being um, one of these, is actually the suite that kind of sits in the middle. So you've got very rich touch points into those levels above it and also into those levels kind of below it then at that point. And as we'll come on to in a moment, you've got the ability then to stretch out into connecting into other applications that you will be using on a on a day to day basis. I think one of the other key parts of this, which you know we have referenced there or is referenced in these slides is actually the um, the, the uniqueness of it being a Microsoft solution with, with Power Platform, but also now, again, you know, maybe COVID has, has led us towards this, that we're all very much um, using Teams as our kind of vehicle for messaging in and out of businesses. And actually, a lot of these kind of um, solutions and particularly around kind of Power Platform as well, can now start to be utilized inside of Teams. So whether it's kind of posting a message from another event that's happened elsewhere, um, but I think, uh, again, you know, Teams then becomes like a vehicle as well then at that point to, to have these automated tasks present information back out into. And again, we'll, we'll talk through some use cases of those again um, shortly. OK, so um, at the heart of uh, our platform as well, there is a, is a very kind of comprehensive data layer called the Microsoft Dataverse. Um, so it's basically able to kind of sit in, um, sit in the background, underlying um, some of the, the kind of component parts of, of, of Power Automate and Power Apps and Power BI and the like as well. And it can obviously then be used in conjunction with um, other connectors. It can be used as, you know, from, from a set of business rules. And as you can see within this kind of quadrant here, you've got security data, storage, logic and integration. So as you're starting to use it, you can then start leveraging um, some more of this, which really sits at the heart of the Power Platform itself. So, yeah, all of those four elements that we spoke about earlier on can be underpinned by the Dataverse, which is effectively the data layer that's, that's sitting beneath them. OK, so, yeah, so uh, I guess in an extension of that, you know, we've got... Um, We've got Power Apps, which was again a webinar that we did a month or so ago. Um, we've got Dynamics, which is um, a suite of different applications as well for Microsoft, you know, ERP, CRM, um, and the like as well, which can also feed down into um, this same layer then at that point. So again, a nice kind of complete solution, which all ties back together. And, and as you can see, uh, Anna's slides here have articulated that. The, the, the kind of love of the terms of them kind of coming back together at the bottom. So if we talk now very specifically around Power Automate, now that we've kind of done a bit of a high level overview as to, you know, the Power Platform itself, um, what are we kind of looking to achieve? So 
it, the, the, the processes within every business are, you know, you're looking to automate tasks, you're looking to automate processes. Um, there are an extensive, you know, 400 plus out of the box kind of um, pre-configured automations that already exist. And again, when we send out the follow-up email um, with regards to the webinar, we, we can put the links to those in there, but you can really start getting a feel for the types of events and activities that maybe have already um, been collated as, a, as an automation, um, but that's not to say that that's the extent of them by any means. It'll just give you a bit of a flavor as much as anything as to a very, maybe a simple start point that you think might actually be useful and beneficial to your business. Again, like quick modeling of, of business processes, the actual Power Automate um, kind of solution is, is very user, is very um, visual in a way. Um, so it's able to be a bit of drag and drop um, in terms of the kind of processes that are, are kind of um, incorporated as part of that. Then at that stage, and you can probably see them on screen here, they're very much stepped in terms of their approach of how they're kind of delivered. Um, and, and that then makes it really kind of hopefully more simple to then adopt. Um, and once you can start building out your own internal kind of knowledge with regards to the actual solutions itself, then at that point, um, you will then start kind of thinking of extra things that you can then start adding into the mix as well then at that stage that will start benefiting the business. And it may well be that you start joining um, kind of automations together then at that point. Um, again, we talk about approvals. Again, you know, approval processes are, are, are very, um, well suited to Power Automate. So if it's, a, I don't know, a sign off of a holiday request, as an example, that you may well push uh, an event through from, I don't know, Microsoft Form or Power App into, say, um, Teams to get signed off, you may well use Power Automate to, to kind of trigger that action and present that um, approval back in inside of Teams for you to sign off. Or it might be something else. It might be a, an email that kind of gets sent out to a specific mailbox. Um, the next bit down from that, we could start talking a very, a very high level about kind of uh, artificial intelligence kind of decision making then at that point. So um, uh, if there's then that type of approach um, and then we get the kind of robotic process automation again, um, we'll look at this uh, in, a, in, in a moment with regards to the two elements that sit behind Power Automate. We've got the robotic process automation, which is the Power BI desktop. And then we've got the cloud flows, which sit inside of the, the kind of web service as well. Okay, so um, very, very high level, not wishing to get into the detail of, of, uh, of artificial intelligence, but the um, uh, Power Automate has an element of, of, of ability to use AI builder. Um, so it's, we've got some examples there within the slides of being able to kind of scan particular content or, or kind of doing some predictions and the like as well. Um, and again, you know, I think we, we may all think that artificial intelligence is, is something that's, you know, again, only for the largest of businesses. I think this is probably demonstrating that that isn't necessarily the case. Um, some of it will be about use cases and understanding, you know, what an individual kind of business needs then at that point. But hopefully you can get a bit of an appreciation there as to, to some of the um, kind of simple use cases for using it. I guess a, a really good example there is probably the third one from the bottom, which is actually scanning a receipt and being able to kind of extract information from that receipt then at that point, perhaps to, I don't know, populate a spreadsheet or maybe populate a, um, you know, a, a finance system then at that stage. Okay. But again, we're not, the, the purpose of today isn't to get into the deepest detail of of, of AI, it's more about just giving that real high level overview really as much as anything as to what the kind of component parts are and how they can kind of fit together. Um, I mentioned a, a moment ago that Power Automate effectively has two parts to it then at that point. We've got the Power, 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 BI, uh, Power Automate desktop, and then we've got the uh, cloud flows then at that point as well. So, you're probably thinking to yourself, actually, yeah, we've got some maybe on-premise applications. Um, these, this seems great, but actually, how could you potentially utilize that then at that point with something that's already, um, a, you know, a, a desktop deployed application rather than it being through a browser or through a web service? And, and the Power, Power Automate desktop is really that kind of central part of it. And you can kind of see by this 
uh, graph that we've got on screen here that there are many touch points that you know I'm sure we're all familiar with you know particular automations particular databases um, that might actually be on premise then at that stage so um, physically sat on a server somewhere or indeed email and the like as well and, and the Power Automate desktop kind of bridges the gap really between as we're saying there between cloud technologies and legacy applications then at that point and again you know um, we will we'll kind of talk through that in a bit more detail shortly to kind of give some use cases so a classic use case may well be and this is the intention when we do the kind of presentation uh, and the walkthrough of the the demo itself is actually showing um uh, the extracting of uh, an email um, and, and a PDF within an email to draw the information out of the, the content of that and then actually publishing that back in and writing that information back into a finance solution at that point. Not a web-based finance solution, uh, like an on-premise finance solution at that stage. So again, it's it's kind of that, that breadth of what we can offer in terms of that area now is really, uh, is really wide and, and I guess what what this demonstrates is actually we're not inhibited by having maybe some older technology that you know is being utilized within an organization because that's absolutely fine and that will remain to be the case i'm sure for a long time but bring it bringing this uh power automate for desktop into the mix and then using it with power uh power automate the web service part of it then at that point um really does give you that kind of richer experience okay so we've got um, an overview here of what the automation platform looks like. And what we've actually done is we've said which parts are which. So the process mining, um, the digital process automation, the artificial intelligence and business process management part of it there, acronym heavy, so apologies, uh, I guess, in advance. But those all sit within the kind of cloud services part of Power Automate. And then the RPA, which is the robotic process automation, is the um, user interface automation that I was just describing, which is effectively the Power Automate for desktop. And as I say, they can work in conjunction with each other. They can work independently of each other then at that point as well. Um, but the, again, this session is described to, to kind of provide that overview really as to where each part kind of sits uh, in that regard. And, and what I, what every business would use might actually be very different, dependent on you know where you are in your kind of evolution, the type of industry that you're in. You might use one, you might use the other, you might use a combination of both. Then at that point, so again, important to kind of highlight the differences between the two, but also have the knowledge that actually they can effectively form a a single solution for you to be able to utilize efficiencies within your organisations. Um, again, one of the changes that will be upcoming as um, Microsoft rolls out uh, kind of Windows 11, um, Power Automate actually becomes an application that you'll be able to launch directly from, um, from the task, uh, from the start menu of, of Windows 11. So again, at the moment, um, it is an install, but actually in, in Windows 11, from what we're understanding, this will now be deployed out and it'll be re readily available as an application directly from the start menu. Um, you'll be able to, to kind of use. Um, coming back to the kind of visual design aspect of it, and as I was kind of mentioning earlier on, um, it's very much a kind of drag and drop experience when you're looking at the Power Automate itself. So as you can see here on screen, you know, there are a number of elements. This is the Power Automate desktop down the side of the screen itself. There are a number of actions. Okay, so we can see in here, it might be a web automation. It may well be something that you're wishing to do with Excel. So as, as an example, you know, we've done some recent work with clients, which is copying data between Excel files, as an example. Um, so where you have uh, linked files, you might have a requirement to say, have a master data spreadsheet and have independent kind of linked spreadsheets off of it that may well need to have data fed to it. Um, that could then be, that's been achieved through uh, Power Automate for Desktop um, and, and us kind of automating that task. In a similar fashion, we've done work with uh, clients that utilizes um, Power Automate for extracting information from one system and passing it actually in this, in that situation to um, 
a power app then at that point and the power app then extends the functionality it takes that information it moves it forward but that's all done kind of systematically in the background with regards to the um uh, the, the, the the power automate kind of functions running then at that point now it might look slightly overwhelming on screen and again just coming back to that point from earlier you know we can work with clients in terms of building out a uh, an initial use case um with you um, we can also look at undertaking kind of training, um, should there be a requirement in that area. Um, and I think once you get um, your kind of first experience of Power Automate bedded down, yeah. then actually it becomes a natural extension to, to kind of move forward. Excellent. Okay, so Anna's very kindly joined us. So at that point, um, Anna, would you, uh, would you like to take over from there? Hey, thanks. Thanks, Tristan. And thank you, everyone, for uh, your, your patience. And also, thank you for having me today. It's such, a, it's such an honor to be here today. Uh, I must say, I did have a very beautiful background like Tristan has, but I joined in a rush and I, and I do not have it on. And I apologize, especially to, jo uh, to Jody, who has been working hard to produce this. So I'm very sorry about that. Um, thanks for joining today um, as we talk about Power Automate and RPA. Um, very excited to be with you here today and to talk about our really cool tool that as you've seen so far is quite different from a traditional RPA tool. Um, we are um, hoping to give you a demonstration of these tools as well towards the towards the end of today. So yeah, really cool, really cool to be here. Um, so Tristan, if you wanna, I, I reckon you've done this slide already. If you wanna, yeah, move. absolutely. There you go, Anna. Thank you. So, RPA for um, RPA for Microsoft, and as uh, Tristan already, I'm sure covered, um, is more of a complete intelligent automation suite rather than just a robot builder. What we're trying to do here is to create automation in the best possible way. And what we normally find is that the very first uh, thing that organizations run into um, is processes all over the place. And the fact that people don't really know um, how those processes are being, are being executed day to day. So for that, we do actually have a solution in order to be able to um, identify where are our bottlenecks and what, what really should we be um, automating, what will return, what will give us a return on, any, on, any invest, on our investment. We really need to understand the way we work uh, day to day. So for that, we're planning to take out the guesswork and use a tool that's called Process Advisor. If you uh, don't mind going to the next slide, please. Amazing. So with Process Advisor and Process Mining today, um, so Process Advisor is our process mining capability. Um, our point is to actually be able to understand the business process. And then after we've gathered all of our insights, we're going to be able to turn all of that into action and give you a full end-to-end -end automation. So if we can move to the next slide, please. Amazing. So this is what it looks like once we have the once we have all of the all of our insights. What this does, as you can see, is able to create um, a visual representation of all of our steps within a process, and more so, it's able to give us all of the variants. So probably I work differently to how Tristan would work or how Jody would work on the same process. And what this does, it allows us to not argue on which process is best 
it actually measures which one takes less time and whether either of us are actually skipping some of the steps that can be quite crucial uh, within our business process. I'm sure that for everyone here today, um, governance, security and compliance are very, very important facts. So um, our process mining capability will be able to uh, highlight whether we are um, taking shortcuts that we shouldn't really be taking. So once we have done this analytics, we are going to be able to do um, to to do a lot more. So um, the way we actually gather all of this information is by using Power Automate. You can see here on the very first uh, screenshot on the left hand side, you have a process advisor tab right under Power Automate. So that means everything happens in the cloud, but we, we are going to be using the same streamlined process and the same tooling. So that means that I'm gonna be able to record my, my stuff, my, uh, my step-by-step. -step. Once I have recorded my stuff, I'm able to map all of my clicks. You'll see that when we do, um, when we go through a process um, for a system or even for individuals, it's really hard to understand what has been going on. So for that, we are able to label all of the all of the activities that we do, so that we uh, we actually get to get to the analytics part that makes sense for everyone. So opening up an application makes sense for everyone. Right click on div number three makes sense to no one. So that's what we're trying to achieve right here, um, a verbatim um, process for everyone to understand. Amazing. Cool. So once I've created my flow, uh, once I've created my process, what I can do is share it with everyone involved. So um, everyone who is executing said process will need to have a Microsoft 365 um, or a Power Automate license, um, and which is probably what you already have anyway due to your um, enterprise agreements with office um, once i've done that you will get a link that will allow you to um, create your own process so you're going to record your own step by step and then customize it once we've analyzed it we are able to create a report and uh, share it with senior stakeholders tell them exactly that if we act on this step and this other step, we're gonna gain 30 seconds times 100 people doing the process. Therefore, this is how much um, the whole thing's gonna, it, it's costing us every day. Um, so it's a really powerful tool if you, if you think about it and if you have those endless meetings that just go on and on and on and without really uh, achieving, the, achieving that much. Thank you very much. So on top of all of this and on top of all of the functionality that we offer within, uh, within Power Automate, and Microsoft Cloud in general, Microsoft is investing every day. Um, it's important that we understand the, the value of Power Automate Desktop and of Power Automate in general, um, because this will soon show up everywhere. Uh, as an example, coming soon, we are going to have uh, the possibility of creating these workflows within Teams. So if Teams is a tool that we are all using, potentially instead of Zoom, then, um, then we're going to be able to create our little own workflows to optimize our own work, uh, workload every day. Now, this is important because on top of this, um, as you probably have seen uh, in um, just a few minutes ago, we are in fact offering uh, Power Automate Desktop for free for any 
um, for any Microsoft user. So if you have a Windows 10 or a Windows 11, you can actually use it for free for your own productivity. What this means is that very soon a whole world would have seen this tool and would have been able to automate some bits of their of their day to day world. Once this goes into teams as well, what we're seeing here is a global type of adoption and usage. Um, this is just so important because we're already probably paying for it. Um, robots are very expensive things and whilst we do not um, present ourselves as a full end-to-end -end enterprise super speedy robots like, uh, like some of our competition, Microsoft does come with a fully uh, intelligent automation platform that everyone has access to. And it's now time for us to, to begin uh, looking at this technology and taking advantage of it. Now, going to the next slide, if you're thinking, um, well, that's all well and good, but actually this is a very, very new tool and, uh, and granted it is. It's only been um, put into general um, usage, I think in January that, uh, this year or something like that, Microsoft have just acquired um, Win Automation last year in September. So you can imagine um, the speed and, of, 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 and the investment into this a suite of tools if Microsoft is already a leader in Forrester and Gardner Webb's re uh, reports. You can imagine just how quickly um, all, of these, um, all of these tools got to adoption and how easy it is for us to learn them and put them into practice and so on and so forth. I can tell you from my own experience that um, uh, from, from my position and from my job, I have the honor of, of working with many partners um, similar to yourselves and partners who have adopted this, uh, this strategy of working are already very, very successful and their customers are very successful already. And I'm not gonna go into monetary value here, but I can tell you that there's huge adoption from financial institutions to health, to, pub to public sec uh, sector and, and, and many more. So very cool to have a look at this technology. Next slide, please. Um, we are giving you here, because um, you will get, so you'll get a version of this deck. Um, and I am, I'm not sure that um, you're probably gonna get a version of this deck in a PDF format so that you can have a look at, um, at everything in here. Um, what I've added here at the end of the presentation are a few examples of how we can leverage this technology, um, a few examples of how a step-by-step -step processing uh, solution would be. This is also to help you a little bit because um, there's a lot of information that we've presented here in like 40 minutes, right? Uh, it's only natural that you're not going to ingest all of it. <laughs> so um, this is just a helper thing for you and for you to be able to explain it back to your stakeholders. Um, should you believe this is um, a worthwhile technology to have a look into. Um, we now do have, um, I believe we've, we've added some videos as well, right, and links. Um, as well as some information on who else is using it in the following slides. Absolutely, yeah, that's correct, Dada. So we've got um, we've got this slide here, um, and I think I think probably from from our collective perspective here, there are a lot of well-known names on this slide, and and it's great to see the I suppose the spectrum of different industries as well that are in use here, um, yeah. but actually. I think it'd be fair to say, and we've certainly seen this from a complete IT perspective, and I'm sure Anna can comment on, on what she has as well, 
this is a technology that spans both the smallest and the largest of organizations then at that point um it's always nice to see you know uh some, some names that you can relate to then at that point um but obviously the sectors are probably more important here but actually cross sector is i think the key to take away from this and any business of any size um of any industry then at that point i think can certainly take advantage of it oh uh, yes that's exactly right so we are here looking at all sorts of industries, right, to begin with. And as you mentioned, some of these companies are quite big and they can be um, maybe a little bit intimidating, thinking that, oh, if Coke is doing it, then it must be super expensive. Uh, it must take a lot of, a, a long time and it must be very complicated um we're not here to tell you this is super easy to implement and that you're going to be able to get started tomorrow we're here to tell you that we know how it works that we have amazing training protocols in place and that our partners have great support including workshops um you know design and architecture checkpoints and blueprints um, and, and all of that. So what we're here to tell you is you can trust this technology and you can trust your partner to work with you so that they can create a fully compliant solution for you. Um, when you have um, complete governance and control, you know exactly what's going on. Uh, no more um, doubting whether someone has filled in all of the information into certain fields or whether we have missed a uh, very cool opportunity just because we were late in producing a report, anything like that. So you will have that security and once your partner is able to uh, create that solution for for you you also have um you know very strong training uh support and uh managed services and you will be able to handle some of that yourself um but do lean on your partner to give you the best advice yeah, I think just, yeah, just to add to that, and I suppose is that everything you've described, you know, complete IT are able to kind of aid you with in that regard. Um, I think actually the first typical engagement would be maybe um, a, an introductory call to work out what the business is looking to achieve and maybe getting a bit more detail about it then at that point and putting a, a very kind of simple scope of works together then at that point to actually look at what that would take to deliver in conjunction with you as a client. Um, and obviously moving forward from there, those other aspects like managed service um, and, and being able to kind of look at a kind of more progressive and ongoing engagement then at that point to look at other areas of the organization um, that require, you know, a, a kind of efficiency reviews or, or a prime for automation. Those are all, they're, those are all key. Um, but what we first suggest is just having that kind of conversation with us. We can start the the process in that regard, we can get a better understanding of what you're looking to achieve and then put a proposal together to work with you to, to effectively facilitate that. Absolutely. And that's all with full Microsoft support here, uh, keen to understand uh, what our customers need and how we can make them happy, essentially. Um, if we're ready and if you guys are keen, um, I'm happy to show you um a bit of how all of this ties in together in a very short demo um that you probably you know cool. understand a lot more of it, it should bring a lot of this information closer to home um that's brilliant thanks anna well i'll i'll make you the uh, the presenter in that regard and so you take over from me uh, thank you very much in the meantime uh, please do post any questions and um, Tristan, feel free to ask me um, anything. Absolutely. Um, yeah, no problem. So I will stop sharing now and I've made you sure. the host. So. Great. Uh, okay, so I will share my screen 
and please let me know when you are able to see it. Am I doing it right? Can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see that now. Yeah, perfect. Okay, amazing. So, good. Um, first of all, disclaimer, I do have multiple screens and I'm hoping nothing will fly off the other screen. Um, but yeah, let, let's just start it. Let's just get started. So, what we are seeing here, uh, I'm trying to make this bit smaller, hopefully, so that I have access to my stuff. You can still see my screen now, yeah? And it's the same one. You're still on the, the one with run history, email invoice processing, Anna, correct? Perfect. So this is a good screen because you guys can see straight away how my flows are doing. You can see here that some of them succeeded and, not, and others have failed. So you will see straight away whether your process has failed or not. Um, I am under flow.microsoft.com, which is my uh, Power Automate portal. You all should have access to this within your own organizations. Now, the way I'm going to do this, as you can see here, I have a bunch of uh, things on the left hand side. I have home, actions, flows to create stuff. I have a very strong monitoring capability here that monitors both cloud flows as well as Power Automate flows. I am able to um, customize my machines in, in case I'm running this in an unattended mode, so on a virtual machine or a server somewhere. Um, and what I can also do is I can prioritize them. So let's just say that we have a set of customers that are more important to us than maybe lower priority customers. We are able to prioritize those cases. I've got my AI builder here, which is my intelligence module that you're going to see as well. My process advisor that we talked about with process mining capabilities and finally solutions. I'm going to go now into solutions. So if I go into solutions, we will be able to see a bunch of stuff here. You should look at solutions as containers or boxes that um, hold all of my that hold all of my functionality. This will be able to to be deployed on your organization. So Tristan will be working on this in a solution and then simply deploy it through a full DevOps process onto your environment. I have here within my one of my solutions, my cloud flow. As you can see, my solution holds all sorts of things. But I'm going to look into my cloud flow for now so that I can see you so that I can show you what I'm what I'm trying to do. My process here is every day I'm getting um, invoices over email. Once I get these invoices over email, I need to see whether we can pay them or not. For that, I'm always reaching out to Tristan to see whether I'm allowed to pay that customer, um, you know, for higher amounts of money, like for example, for over a thousand pounds. Once he says I'm okay, then I will be able to fill in some information into a legacy application because we're, we're using an old accounting app. And once, once I've done that and saved it, I send an email and say, this has been done or this has been rejected. So only by talking to you through that process, you can imagine this takes quite a lot of my of my day to day work. So in order to automate that, I have a flow that triggers every time an email arrives onto my inbox. But I don't want to scan all of my emails. Therefore, I'm going to only scan the ones that contain invoices. And not only I'm looking for my subject filter, all of my customers know this, by the way, but I'm also looking to see whether they have actually attached my invoice, because sometimes some of them forget. So if they haven't attached it, I'm not doing anything. 
But if they have, I'm going to go ahead and extract all of the information from my form. I normally get PDF files or images, just pictures of my invoices. I'm going to extract all of the information. Once I've extract, extracted the information, I automatically send a message on a group to see whether my invoice can be approved. If my invoice is approved, then I'm going to go ahead and run a bot who's going who's gonna to just capture all of my values here that I have just read using artificial intelligence fill in the information and send out the email. All of a sudden, everything I do doesn't require any assistance of, at all. Apart from me having a look to see whether all of my invoices have been uh, processed that day, I don't have to do anything else. I've got stuff for, I've got time for creative work and, uh, and other things. That doesn't mean that my job is less important. No, no, it only means that now I have time for lunch, I have time to think, I will reply to my emails in a timely fashion, stuff like that. So let's get moving. What I'm gonna do in order to trigger this is I am gonna send an invoice and I'm gonna show you it as well so that you don't think that I'm doing any sort of magic. This is my personal email address. Please just email me on my work addresses. I'll, I'm more likely to respond. Um, and I'm going to send this to a joint uh, mailbox because my colleagues are monitoring that as well. I'm going to set my subject to new invoice and I will just insert one of my invoices here. Cool. The moment I sent this, my flow should start running. I can see my invoice has arrived. It looks good. If I have a look at the values, this is quite high. So I said for anything higher than a thousand, I do want to go and, and seek some approval. If I want to see how my flow is doing real time as well, I can go here. I don't want to edit anything. And I can see that my status is running right now. So what's it doing? If I click on it, I, I should be able to see exactly what's it doing. It, it can, I can see that my email has arrived and that I'm somewhere here. I know that once I've extracted the information, I should have, according to my values, a message that requires approval. If I go into Teams, I can see that I have just received my message for approval. I will say yes, approved by Tristan. I'll submit this now. And once I've submitted, my, uh, my cloud flow will then release all of the resources that I've been using within the cloud and engage my robot, my desktop robot, and actually um, fire up my legacy application and fill in all of the information. Once it's done, it will just send out an email. It takes a little bit of time to just fire my application. We can see it here. You have to pay attention because it's super quick, much quicker than I would do it. It just fills in all of the information, saves it, and then you will send an email. Um, and this is it, that's all it does. If I actually refresh this, we're soon gonna be able to see that my flow has finished correctly. And we're gonna see what sort of values I have interpreted and what happened as well. Any questions? Yeah, no, I was just going to say, I think um, going back a few slides, I was, I was talking about the, I suppose, Power Automate as a solution and having the two component parts and, and actually having an on-premise application or a legacy application 
doesn't preclude us from actually using these things in conjunction with each other. Um, you know, and, and Parallel uh, Paral Automate for Desktop is a, is a more recent um, kind of uh, solution as part of the Parallel Automate uh, kind of family, isn't it? But actually it's become really important for, for, that, for that piece in particular, you know, bringing cloud services together with perhaps more traditional applications that businesses will still have. Absolutely. My company doesn't, cannot afford rewriting this little app here. They can't. It's so old. And also they, they're not sure how, um, what, what are the validation rules? How does it even work? They just know it works. So they want to keep it on. And a lot of other companies are actually using Excel files and um, uh, SFTP requests and so on and so forth. So for all of that, we would still like to use our, we would still like to use our legacy applications, but in a, in a more automatic way. Um, you can Anna, see we've just, uh, sorry, Anna, we, we've just had a, a question come through from sure. um, Ekbal, which says, can I use this to complete the web forms? Yes, you can absolutely use this to, com to complete web forms. I've just fired my Power Automate desktop. You can see here that I'm running a desktop application at the moment. But if we come on to here and we actually see browser automation, if I click on here, you can see that I cannot not only fill in information on a web form, but I can also extract information. So the same tool will work for desktop apps as well as um, legacy applications that we have on a browser. Uh, however, I would say that if you do have someone that requires something that requires web automation, um, an HTTP request is preferable. So we would do as much as we can with cloud flows before we engage a robot here. Just create a connector. It's very easy to do that. Excellent. Thank you. Hopefully that covers off the question, which is great. Thank you very much. Um, we'll give it. We'll give it a, a minute or so to see if there are any other kind of questions that are, are coming through. Um, what I'd say, what we our intention is to follow up with an email after this event, and at that point, which sends out all of the, the digital information that we've kind of talked about as well. Um, you know. Thank you to Anna for joining. It's been um, it's been a real pleasure to have you present on this and to to give a real rich look and feel as to how Power Automate can be kind of used for business. So thank thank you Anna again on, on, on mine and everyone's behalf in that regard. Um, yeah, it's been uh, it's been a real pleasure to to be able to kind of run through this and and I think I think the key to take away as much as anything is this is a I suppose an introduction as to what Power Automate is all about. There are many things to consider. Um, working with the likes of ourselves as a partner to, to help you understand where those areas of um, efficiency can be made, and obviously, you know, the time requirement to obviously achieve that as well. So, yeah, no, by all means, reach out. Um, you know, if you have an interest in this area or if you want to run by some ideas that you know, you're know you considering making for your business as well, then at that point, we'd, um, we'd be delighted to hear from you. Absolutely. Uh, and I, I, I'd just like to iterate that uh, it has been a pleasure being here today. I am so sorry for, uh, for, for being late, but thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for joining um i will be here for like if you guys want to hang around for like around i don't know 10 minutes 15 minutes for extra questions i would like to reiterate the fact that complete it will have full microsoft support for any project so uh you're in safe hands excellent well, we have got some more questions coming through um so here's one from james thank you james um, is there currently a flow that can take an email attachment and save it to a network folder automatically? There's even a template for that. So within Power Automate, we use um, templates as an accelerator thing. So this template will uh, 
handle your email grab and you'll just have to customize it and then rpa will say will will save it on a on a network uh unless we have a direct connector so yes absolutely we can do that excellent um yeah thank you to andrew uh, andrew saying been a real eye open a real eye opener um where the appetite the, the possibility so that's that's fantastic here i think uh, that's what we're looking to achieve from this session as much as anything is just to give a little bit of insight um, to provide a bit of background and then it's it's about contextualizing that to each organization and for you to think about your own processes so that's brilliant here thank you for that um liz has a question that desktop version uh, is different to the online app um question mark i've been having a nose um not seeing what i'm hoping for um i don't know if you wanted to uh, just a little bit more on that one, Liz, just to, to or, or indeed reach out separately afterwards. We're more than happy to kind of catch up with you in that regard to see what you're um, what you were looking to achieve. Um, but yes, I think the, the context there is desktop, the desk power automate the desktop is a different application to the power automate online version or web web um, uh, kind of flows than at that stage. Um, but they do work together or they can work together um, if you require them to. Uh, so the question is to gather data from a website and move it to Excel. Um, I think, that, yeah, I know. Can I, can I let you take that one? Sure. That is a scenario that absolutely can be achieved with, uh, with Power Automate. And depending what the website is, it would be either one or the other. So either uh, a Power Automate desktop or just a Power Automate flow. Um, yes, we can absolutely do that. And in fact, um, what we are doing at the moment, we are running a series of training events. Um, the ones that I'm running are for partners only, a train the trainer event that Complete IT will participate uh, very soon. Um, but once they've done that, you guys will be able to have the same training from, from them if you, you, if you wish. Um, part of the training is actually gathering some data and moving it to Excel. So, yeah. yes. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, Anna. Um, Ekpo has a, a, a question. Um, sorry, it's just moved on my screen. Um, uh, are there any templates on the completing the web forms and what do they need to do? Um, is there any training events on this? Um, you know, obviously, Complete IT, as Anna was just saying, you know, can provide training if required in those areas. Um, what we probably wish to do is engage with you to understand more about the, spe the, the specifics of the web form itself um, and how, you know, we might be able to aid you in that regard. So, yeah, if you'd want to message us kind of subsequent to that, then we can catch up and work out. You know, what your use case is and, and provide a bit more um, detail behind it then and um, how it might be achieved if that's okay um cam has asked the question uh, will this work with coding and uploading invoices into concur also will it recognize a rent invoice needs to be coded to the rent account okay. um yes so uh i i absolutely feel your pain with concur <laughs> um <laughs> ooh, don't get me started so <laughs> um yes we uh, this this does work with coding and uploading new wishes into concur if you already have the code the coding sequence in um whatever programming language you should know that power automate desktop can fire up um, pre-existing code. If you do not, we can create it via Power Automate for desktop. Um, the really cool thing about Power Automate is that once it gathers up information from any sort of invoice, uh, it can add some logic. In my example, I was uh, having a look at my invoice amount. And if my invoice amount was high, then I wanted approval. In your case, as long as we can um, identify the rent accounts for from any sort of thing, like for example, from, from a category, from a word on the invoice, from a number, anything like that, then we are able to structure it and record it in the right place. Okay, 
Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Again, I think all of the, the, the kind of the detail of the questions, we can always engage. If you have anything specific that you know you want to take offline, then we're again happy to do that and have those kind of discussions for sure. Absolutely. And loving these questions, they're all brilliant and to the point. And I think you've done a wonderful job at, at explaining this, this technology because obviously uh, questions are very relevant. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that definitely reinforces the, the kind of, you know, the sentiment of what we've been trying to relay in the, in the session itself. So, okay. Um, thank you, Liz. That's very kind. Liz has just uh, posted her thanks on that. There's nothing else at the moment. Like you say, we'll, we'll leave open, we'll leave the session open for a, a few more minutes. Um, you know, Anna and myself will both be here. So if you've got any other questions, please post them. Um, if not, no, thank you um, for on behalf of Complete IT, on behalf of Anna and Microsoft as well, then at that point for attending today. Um, it's been a real pleasure to, to, to have your attendance and hopefully you've got something to take away from this in terms of some, hopefully some thoughts in terms of how this may be able to be applied to each specific situation of, of kind of your organisation. Um, please watch out for kind of you know, future messages that we'll be looking to run another session in the early part of next year. It's crazy to think it's next year, but yeah, 2022, um, where we will look at kind of consolidating the knowledge that have been run over the last, um, well, this session and the previous two sessions around Power Platform, then at that point, that hopefully bring everything together and you can see the interaction between um, the relevant component parts of, of Power Platform. But, um, but yeah, uh, we will post that out and um, you'll see some communications coming out from, from a marketing perspective, no doubt in the coming weeks um, in that regard. So again, thank you on behalf of us all. We, we do really do appreciate your time over, over this period. And any ideas or any scenarios that you guys would like to, um, to explore? I think we are super happy to um, take away all of these ideas and uh, hopefully even create a more relevant demo or POC for you. Um, yeah, so that, because we know just how hard it is. I myself have been working within a financial institution before working at Microsoft. I used to lead a, a loans team for bank and every, piece of new technology was a struggle to demonstrate and to, um, you know, bring the arguments for and, and so on. So we're here to help. Thanks, Anna. Yeah, like I say, we'll, we'll hang around for the next, you know, five, 10 minutes. And, uh, but yeah, um, if, uh, if there are more questions, then we wish you all a, a lovely rest of the day and rest of the week and uh, a safe and happy Christmas as well. Thank you for attending. Happy holidays, thank you. <laughs>